Australia, famous around the world for its dangerous animals. There's the great white shark and the funnel web spider. Then there's the crocodile and of course, the drop bear. But for three months a year, one animal is responsible for more attacks on humans than any other, the magpie. Magpie attacks are a commonly cited occurrence in Australia during their nesting season, which is from August to October. So far in 2019, there have been 3,393 magpie attacks um, reported to Magpie Alert in New South Wales, a website designed to, to document public experiences through citizen science. The amount of unreported attacks is likely much higher. One recent event left a six-year-old blinded in her left eye. The Australian magpie is a territorial songbird known to frequently attack intruders cl in close proximity to their nesting areas. Their nesting groups of up to 24 individuals in trees but feed exclusively on the ground. Their attacks usually involve direct contact, often striking from a blind angle, targeting the back of the neck of targets. Magpies are also known to chase after other birds for short distances without the intention to kill them. Magpies attacks are one of the most significant interactions between humans and animals in suburban areas of Australia. Current evidence suggests magpie attacks on humans are a form of brooding behavior as opposed to territorial defense. And the vast majority of attacks involve a male while there are eggs at the nest. In this study, we are looking to understand whether different situations change the swooping behavior of magpies. We hypothesize that the behavior of magpies will change based on the perceived risk and that the swooping behavior will be more common against single walkers and cyclists as compared to groups. We also believe that cyclists will be targeted more often based on anecdotal accounts. We have framed our study around, the t around Tim Bergen's questions, what mechanisms give rise to this behavior? Megapyalert.com was used to identify sites for the study. Magpie Alert is a citizen science website that can be used to track magpie swoops. The site also captures information about the attacks, including whether victims are, were injured and the activity they were doing at the time. Three sites were chosen using Magpie Alert that showed recent magpie activity and their st study was conducted between 22nd and the 30th September 2019. Once magpies were lo located at the sites, cameras were used to record their behavior under different episodes. Episodes including walking, jogging, cycling slowly, cycling fast, walking groups, walking beside the cyclists, and other general activities from passerby. Team members simulate, simulated these episodes and magpie behavior was recorded using a libitum and scanning techniques of the capture footage. Behavioral actions captured including swooping, flying away, vigilance at height, vigilance on the ground, and no change in behavior. We identified our site using Magpie Alert to be in residential Redfern. The site was between Vice Chancellor's Oval and Henderson Road and was recorded to have over five magpie attacks in the last two months. Upon arrival to the site, we noticed moderate foot and cyclist traffic both within the park and on the adjacent road. It was identified that there was a singular magpie at the site situated in overhanging trees where it remained vigilant of the passing foot and bike traffic. Our results suggested that the magpie in this site exclusively attacks cyclists, as all tests not involving cyclists resulted in no swoops. Skateboarders, scooters, joggers and runners were not attacked in any form by the magpie. During a 60 minute period we recorded 34 swoops to cyclists where the magpie would swoop an average of 2.6 times per episode. During cycling tests the magpie would attack repeatedly until the cyclists had either gotten off the bike or had exited the path that passed through the site. It was also recorded that the magpie would fly to swoop cyclists on the other side of the road. It was found that the magpie would not swoop when the cyclist was approximately 20 metres from overhanging trees or buildings or when road cyclists passed through the site at a high speed. Site 2 consisted of two distinct regions, an outdoor park and suburban area. The suburban region had few people walking outdoors and a few cars passing by, with houses comprising most of the land use. The park region was dense with trees, and the bike track ran through the area. 
On the bike track, people were seen walking their dogs and riding bikes. Site 2 consisted of dense trees and had Chipping Northern Lake to one side and residential buildings on the other. The area was quiet, with few cars and people passing by, and a bike track that extended throughout the entire Chipping Northern Lake site. There were no observed signs of aggression from the magpies. Their flight initiation distance was approximately 10 metres. There had been 6 recorded cases of swoopings, 4 of which resulted in, in injury since 2017. Magpies tended to be more vigilant of human presence and with a third of episodes having them decide to fly away when approached within 10 metres by an individual walking. These same magpies were constantly vigilant in all episodes when presented with a running individual. When a group of multiple people walked past these magpies, in half of the episodes they remained vigilant while the others continued with their activities. Cycling, cycling quickly, and cycling with an individual walking nearby had no effect on magpie responses. Site 3 is located on a main road with a school on one corner and mid-rise apartments on the other. The school side of the road is lined with dense trees while the opposite side is sparser. Two magpies were seen during recording. While at the site, eight swoops were recorded against four pedestrians. These happened exclusively to people that were walking or running along the footpaths on either side of the road. In one instance, the magpie appeared to follow a person across the road before swooping. The swoops were mostly initiated from trees and once from telephone wires. On average, the birds swooped twice per episode. The birds attacked from behind, making contact with the victims with their beaks before returning to their perch. The birds appeared selective in their targets, not reacting to all pedestrians. During cycling and group simulations, the birds remained vigilant on their perch and no swoops were recorded. In support of this data, 10 swoops have been recorded on magpiealert.com at this site since the beginning of September, eight of which were against walkers or runners and two against cyclists. Half of these swoops resulted in injury. A study undertaken by Warren and Jones in the Journal of Wildlife Research suggested that Australian magpies show specificity in their swooping attacks. They found a clear majority of magpies only attacked one type of intruder. Our results also support these assertions. Redfern was clearly the strongest evidence that magpie have a behavioural preference for certain people. Our test subject and two strangers cycling were continually swooped upon. There are a total of 34 swoops, the entirety were all of cyclists and no other intruder was attacked. During our time in Redfern, the magpie that had consistently attacked the cyclist began to stop once we rode over the open parkland. It is not clear as to why this was, however we speculate it could be due to potential threats in the area or the lack of a landing zone. A similar reluctance to swoop was seen as the cyclist approached a group of people. The magpie also swooped only one time, as opposed to the average two swoops, when our test subject walked beside the cyclist. While not confirmed, this data implies controlled aggression if the intruders are grouped together. As demonstrated at the red fern site, Speed made no difference as to the behaviour whether the cyclists were swooped. Furthermore, in Randwick, both walkers and joggers were swooped. In regards to Tim Bergen's questions, the proximate mechanism is the existence of an intruder and the ultimate mechanism is the defence of the nest. As for the phylogenetic explanation, the trait of male defence would have developed largely from the fact that offspring being defended has a higher chance of surviving than ones that aren't defended. In conclusion, it is known that magpies breeding season in Australia is between August and October every year. While their chicks take six weeks to fledge and uh, leave the nest, hence the magpies breeding season is usually over by November. While during this per period, magpies swapping behavior in, is in their full force. The swapping action can be considered as a behavior to protect their chicks from danger, danger when the Intruder entered the area within 20 meters in radius from its nest. Besides from the behavior data connected from the red phone site also indicates that magpies are usually swapping to individuals rather than a group of people. Moreover, compared with the magpies in red phone site to the other two sites, they are more sensitive to objects with higher speed, which refers more to operant condition in this particular site.